day of the Future Blockchain Summit at Dubai Harbor. I'm Ronella Hernandez, and sitting here with me, we have one of the attendees, Guido. How are you? Good, thank you. It's a great event here. Yeah, what do you think about it so far? Are you liking it? Especially like the area here where you are sitting, because here <laughs> is the atmosphere, here is the part and the emotion. In the other part, it's a little bit more too quiet for me. Okay, that's good. So all the excitement's here. Love to hear that. So tell me what else you've you've heard from other attendees, any insights that you've learned that you can share with us? Yeah, a, a big topic here is behind the, the presentation of the different projects. Um, the topic, what is the future of blockchain? What is the combination with AI? What is the future of regulatory topics? And this is the main topic here behind it because it has a huge impact to our future and especially also to the future of this technology, of Web3 uh, technology. Yes, definitely. So does that topic interest you the most then, the regulatory aspect of things? I, I see personally very, um, very much the regulatory topic going in a totally wrong direction because at least the regulatory tries to uh, regulate all blockchain technology projects with a banking uh, view or with the banking glasses. And this is something, and they always try to achieve more and more, but regulatory regulation has never ever, even in the US has never really hindered criminals to do their activities. So if it's blocking our decentralized technology, if it's uh, stopping that we can serve the people on this planet, which is the mission we came from, then it's going in the wrong direction. And in Switzerland, we have developed in another industry a self-regulation, which is much more effective, much better than the regulation. And so you this, prefer self-regulation yes. over governmental regulation? Yes. It's, Why? It's, a, it's a system, it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid between a government observation of the self-regulation organizations, but the self-regulation organizations are at least privately uh, raised up by the different industries. And everybody is still obliged to, to stop sanction bypassing to stop criminal activities, terrorist financing, but the privacy is kept with it and you are, can still be active and do your job. And you are not blocked by hundreds and thousands of regulations of forms, audits and whatever you have normally with a bank or an exchange, which is not suitable for any technology. So what do you think of the regulatory landscape in the UAE? They did very well in the beginning. Here, I was very interested to incorporate here an NFT marketplace a couple of weeks ago. And nevertheless, here they changed the regulation for NFT marketplaces, so it went in the same direction. And when I talked to Vara yesterday to uh, some guys here and asked them, what is your vision, where you want to go? You want to adapt to the regulation in Europe and the US, or you want to serve the world? And they said, okay, we would like to serve the world, but first, because we are not on the best list, we have to go for the other regulation. So it's for me uh, telling, I want to go to the sun, but I have to go to the rain. <laughs> huh. So what do you think is the way around this? How can we better things? Here in UAE or in general? In general, but maybe on, we can talk about specifically UAE. I see too much industrial players uh, just voting for regulation and too much exchanges guiding our our um, our discussions here. If you look to this hall here, to all the projects here, they are all at least coming with the same mission. We want to have a, a trustful wallet. We want to have an exchange. Yeah? There is no innovation which is, is here, which is not the, the, the soul of blockchain is represented here. I was incorporating a lot of projects like Cardano, like Tezos, like Cosmos Interchange, Shapeshift, whatever you name Do those have it. a soul? I was in the board of all them. Do those projects have a soul? I think I have a soul for it. My soul is uh, for it. I'm a blockchain enthusiast. And for me, the, it's still a mission that we change something in our world, that we change also the access for all the people on this planet to this technology. And how do you envision the future of blockchain? What, what would you like it to look like? I would love, love to have it to, to give power back to the people by blockchain, to give trust, transparency to the people and to governments and to anybody who wants to. So fighting also corruption in the same way, fighting all the things, but by the, therefore I need this liberal environment. And I'm really looking and talking to a lot of governments and politicians in, in different countries to say, hey, let's give us the self-regulation. It's also a benefit for you in person not for your government, but for you in person, why you're not uh, going for it. And we can stop everything what you're, you're going for, what your aims are. You don't need this squeezed regulation where you put the project into jails uh, for 
for achieving the future. Good point, good point. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much.